Michael enjoyed the first days of spring. Sitting on a bench on the waterfront, he watched elderly couples and families with children strolling leisurely down the path. The kids were laughing happily and running after each other. A little boy was holding a stick in his hand and drawing signs in the sand that only he could understand. He was wrinkling his forehead and carefully tracing the figures. It's no more. The future civil servant. Michael smiled. How fleeting life is. Today you are five years old and you're walking hand in hand with mom and dad. And tomorrow you are a father yourself. And the child asks you to buy him a bicycle. In his 40 years, the man has seen a lot. But for all his life, he has learned only one wisdom. Family is most important. No career can compare with the happiness that the beloved wife and children can give. Michael worked as a jeweler and was considered one of the most distinguished experts in his field. He had golden hands, which was noticed by his father, who discerned in the apprentice a true nugget of talent. He could make a masterpiece out of a mere piece of gold. The man clearly had talent, so he became a good specialist. Michael loved his work. He would come to the shop in a good mood, turn on some quiet, relaxing music, and get to work. The master's bright energy bribed. All the couples whom Michael made wedding rings said that they had never once thought of divorce, and the rings were the talismans of their love. Indeed, the jeweler worked in good faith. He put his heart and soul into every gold or silver piece and tried to make everything for himself. His rings and bracelets were like works of art. Michael had no equals in his work, but there was no happiness in his personal life. Savitsky was not yet old, but his youth was also somehow imperceptibly gone. All his free time he devoted to work, so in the love life, it was still quiet and calm. There was neither time nor desire to look for someone. Eight years ago, Michael had a wonderful family life, a beautiful wife and a lot of career ambition. The man was happy and literally dissolved in his happiness. But after the death of his beloved wife Bella, life for Michael stopped and there wasn't the meaning in it. Michael met Bella in a cafe. She was then a medical student and Michael had just begun studying jewelry making. The university was near the cafe Hummingbird, where Bella often came to have a snack or just a cup of tea. One day, Michael walked into the cafe and saw her. Bella was standing at the window with cakes and could not choose. She thought for a long time and then said, they're so beautiful, I can't decide. Just give me some tea. Michael smiled and sat in the corner of the cafe, watching the girl drink from a misted glass. When she went outside, the young man caught up with her and handed her the bag. Bella was at loss. You couldn't choose a cake, so I bought you everything. Bon appetit. Michael blushed as he said these words and retreated. The girl stood with her mouth open for a long time and then opened the package and saw a dozen cakes. What a turn. So no one had ever shocked Bella, and she was so confused that she did not even think to thank Michael. The young man did not feel bad about not asking the girl for her phone number. He knew that she often came to this cafe, and they would see each other anyway, and so it happened. After the next meeting, Bella herself suggested to Michael to go to the cinema, and shocked him by the fact that she had already bought tickets. So the young people started dating, and four years later, they got married. Only happiness was short-lived. Bella was diagnosed with inoperable cancer. And no matter how Michael tried to save his wife, the cancer still won. She clung to life to the last, but lost the unequal battle. After his wife's death, Michael lost the meaning of his life. He became a recluse, did not leave home for a few months, but gradually, he came to the realization that he had to live for the sake of his Bella. Unfortunately for Michael, he and Bella never had children. They wanted to take a child from an orphanage, but it did not work out. His wife's illness nullified all their efforts. Dreams about a child remained just dreams, and nothing could be done about it. Savitsky grew up in a happy family. His father was also a jeweler, and passed on to his son all the necessary skills and family business. He met his wife Nora at university. Both parents had higher education, so the family could well be called intelligent. After the death of his wife, Michael was never able to marry. After the death of his wife, Michael was never able to marry. He turned out to be one woman man. He turned out to be one woman man. He visited his beloved wife's grave, and that was enough for him. The man would come to the cemetery, 
sit by the grave and begin to tell Emma what beautiful rings he had made, what the news was in town. Bella was a terrible listener in her lifetime. She could sit with her husband for hours in the kitchen and listen, listen, listen. She loved to share her impressions and emotions with Michael, but unfortunately, in the last year of her life, all heart-to-heart -heart talks came to naught because of her illness. On weekdays, Michael was constantly lost in the workshop. He did not notice how time passed when he was busy working. He worked so hard that by the time he was 40, his eyesight had severely deteriorated and he had to work with glasses. One day, Michael was busy with another order. At the moment, a pretty woman entered the studio, holding the hand of a girl about 8 or 9 years old. She began to take an active interest in one or other of Michael's products. Questions came pouring out of the horn of plenty. The woman rattled like a magpie. The master got the impression that the client was trying to conquer his teeth, but it was not clear why. At the same at the same time, she was a little embarrassed and spoke with a hitch. And then the woman went to the most important thing, turning to her little companion. Ellie, let me see a little thing. The girl took a small gold bracelet, in form of a twisted gold snake, out of her pocket and handed it to the jeweler. The woman turned to Michael. Would you take it as a scrap? How much will you give? The thing is, we really need the money. The jeweler looked at the bracelet with amazement. The fact is that he recognized this thing, which he had specially made for his wife's 30th anniversary. How could it be in the possession of an 8-year-old girl? Michael asked the little girl in a trembling voice. Girl, where did you get that thing? The little girl answered embarrassedly. It's my mom's bracelet. An aunt gave it to her at the supermarket. My mom gave it to me before she died. I live with my stepfather now, and he drinks and swears a lot. In general... In general, I hid the bracelet for a long time, and he found it and forced me to sell it or exchange it for vodka. The jeweler looked questioningly at the girl's companion. She was in her thirties, but she looked worn out by life. The woman was ahead of his question and said, I am her neighbor. I help the little girl as much as I can. Her stepfather has got some nerve. Brute. He found a place to send the girl, and one with a gold jewelry, so I went with her, or else she'll lose it or it'll be taken away on the way. The jeweler was shocked. He didn't even notice when he was burying his wife that she didn't have a bracelet on her hand. And the woman next door was making excuses. I would adopt a baby, but they don't let me. I'm single, the worst. I worked as a cleaner at school. And my husband died in an accident few years ago. So I help the baby as much as I can. While her stepfather drinks alcohol. They have no food, nothing. The drunkard thinks only about vodka. And the baby needs to be fed. I thought I would help Ellie sell the bracelet, buy her some groceries, and give him the rest for the damned vodka. The jeweler was shocked by the story. He even felt uncomfortable somehow, as if a chill ran down his back. He patted the girl on the cheek and said, I'll give you the money of course, but I won't take the bracelet. Since my late wife gave it to the girl's mother, it must have been her last will. Bella never did anything for nothing. She had a very kind soul and she appreciated generosity in people. As it turned out, Michael's wife shortly before her death spotted a poorly dressed woman with a small child looking for the cheapest pasta on the store shelf. Bella felt sorry for them, for they could not scrape together money for food. She was holding one year old girl who was crying violently and it was impossible to look at the picture without tears. Bella took the bracelet off her hand and gave it to the woman. She had no cash left in her pocket and she wanted to help. Bella had a feeling she would die soon, so she had no use for money or valuables. Chloe was very grateful to Bella. She was touched by this gesture of kindness and decided not to sell the thing and leave it for her daughter as a keepsake. Unfortunately, a year ago, a drunken rich man hit Chloe at the crosswalk. She died in the ambulance and the girl was left an orphan. She did not know her father and her stepfather moved in her mother's apartment as a host. The brazen alcoholic wanted to take over the apartment, but Ellie was the only heiress, so he had to live with the girl. Ellie tried her best to hide the bracelet, but her stepfather saw it. He was hungover, but his eyes immediately fell on a shiny band on the child's arm. What the hell is that? Go to a pawn shop or jewelry store today and turn it in. Bring me the money or better yet, vodka right now. Ellie told everything to her neighbor Anna and she decided to help the girl go with her to the pawn shop, but everywhere they offered very little money for the bracelet. 
so it was decided to go to a jewelry shop. Michael thought about it. He tried to comprehend little Ellie's story, but he could not comprehend how a small child could be treated like that. He told Anna and Ellie that he would try to solve the problem. By calling all his acquaintances and using all his connections, Michael made sure that Ellie's stepfather was removed from the apartment and she never saw him again. Anna took the girl to her place and the apartment was locked. Michael helped with the groceries and clothes and began to visit Anna and Ellie regularly, as if he stuck to them with his soul. One weekend, he came by on the pretext of bringing a cake for Ellie. While Anna was preparing tea, Michael suddenly said to her, I love you. I can't. Let's live together, Anna. Even the woman's cup fell out of her hands and shattered in pieces. She turned to the man and said, I was afraid to tell you. I thought you get the wrong idea. I fell in love with you back then, in a jewelry shop. Such a noble man. The dream of all the ladies. Michael carefully picked up the shards from the cup, laughing, threw them in the trash. Well then, for sure, for luck. He pulled Anna to him and kissed her with a long, gentle kiss. The woman pressed against him with her whole body and finally felt safe. Anna and Michael have been living together ever since. The woman moved in with him, moving all her and Ellie's things there. After a while, the couple got married at the registry office and immediately filled documents for Ellie's adoption. Michael felt from the very first meeting that he was inextricably connected to the girl. Maybe because of the bracelet, or maybe because Bella knew what was coming. She didn't know, but felt it. They say that intuition is heightened before death. Finally, after many years, Michael felt again what true happiness is. A beloved family, and nothing else is needed. Life has changed from grey and dull, to bright and colourful. Now, Michael no longer stayed up late at work, but happily ran home, where they were waiting for him to feed him a delicious hot dinner. Michael melted the bracelet down to be on the safe side. He made two pairs of beautiful and delicate earrings out of gold and gave them to his girls. He made delicate gold leaves for Anna and little butterflies for Ellie. So, the master immortalized the memory of his late wife and pleased the family, with whom he was infinitely happy.